So, welcome back. So, again we will uh, continue the discussion on this uh, adjoint operator and symmetric operators and when a symmetric operator uh, is going to be self adjoint. Uh, those things we will now discuss. Okay. So, again let me uh, say how we define the adjoint. Okay. So, this so y belongs to d a star uh, if x going to a x y this inner product is continuous. Okay. So, of course, x belongs to d a and of course, d a is dense. Okay. So, this this was essential in order to get this unique element. So, then we have a x y so relation x a star y. So, this is very similar to the bounded case only thing is now we have to pay attention to the domain. Okay. So, in particular if a is symmetric we see that if a is symmetric then a star is an extension of okay so this is clear from the definition but <coughs> okay we say so this is again definition a is self adjoint self adjoint if a and a star are same same okay so again let me stress so this means this means da is equal to da star and a x equal to a star x uh, for all x in d a. Okay. So, here is uh, a result in this direction. So, just I will uh, mention that. So, just <coughs> Ah, before okay. So, so some some facts. Some facts I will write. So, we can compare the graph of A star and graph of A. Okay. So, here is one such result. So, this is very straightforward graph of A, A star is graph of A, but there is a twist. So, I will put this operator V and it is orthogonal complement. So, this is V is from H to H cross H 2. So, this is Cartesian product. Uh, defined by V of so if you take any pair, okay, you just y minus x. There are other definitions, but this is simplest one. Okay, so that, okay, and the this is orthogonal <coughs> uh, complement. So orthogonal complement of any subset of a Hilbert space is always closed. So this implies a star is always a closed object. A 
a closed loop even if A is not. Okay, so, this is one uh, interesting thing. Okay, so, A star is even if uh, <coughs> A is not. The second one, suppose uh, A is a symmetric operator, symmetric operator, uh, then if lambda is non real that means, its imaginary part is uh, not 0, then norm of A uh, plus or minus okay, lambda i x is bigger than or equal to uh, okay, imaginary part of lambda norm x for all x in d a. Okay, so, this is a straightforward computation you can do. So, the this immediately say that this operator a plus r minus lambda i whenever lambda is non real is 1 1, but it may not be on 2. Okay. So, that is that is where the uh, trouble comes. So, when it is on 2 also then suddenly it is uh, <coughs> is going to be self agent operator that we will see that. Okay. So, this implies further uh, <coughs> image of A plus or minus lambda i. Okay, so, this is a subspace of H is a closed subspace closed subspace. if and only if A is closed. Okay, so, this identity uh, gives this result. Okay, so, this, this image or range of this operator is a closed subspace if and only if uh, A is a closed operator. Okay. And this gives necessary and sufficient condition for a, so that is what third one. Okay. Suppose A is a closed densely defined symmetric operator. Okay. So, then A is self adjoint oh sorry y 2 if and only if so, plus or minus i belongs to rho i. So, this is resolvent sub. Resolvent set of A. So, this means what? Okay, so, this operator a plus or minus 
i a belongs to b h. So, there is no speciality about uh, this i you can take any lambda non real and you put the condition for plus or minus lambda okay. may be replaced by plus or minus lambda for some non real lambda. Okay. So, this is <coughs> uh, an important result. So, it tells us when a symmetric operator of course, closed and densely defined then only we can define the edge joint. Uh, so, again you see a condition on the resolvent ok sir. So, that is important ok. So, that is fine ok. These are important results. So, if you have studied already it is fine otherwise it is time to recall everything. So, we are going to use all these things ok. Uh, in application to uh, <coughs> a PDs, okay, especially in the case of uh, Schrodinger operator and wave equation, okay, we will see that. So, one final topic of discussion in this operator theory before we move on to uh, <coughs> proper semi group theory and then applications to PDE. Okay. So, this is perturbation. Results. Okay. So, just. So, this essentially developed by Cato in the study of Schrodinger equation and also uh, system of hyperbolic equations. Okay. So, that is. Uh, so, idea is the following. So, for example, consider the heat equation. Okay. So, u t. So, we will treat this as an abstract O d in some function space and we expect a semi group. So, generates a semi group. Okay. We will see that. Okay. So, then if we consider the perturbed equation. u t equal to Laplace n u plus some lower order term. Okay. So, we expect this perturbation by lower order terms not to affect too much and again expect this to generate a semi group. Expect it. Okay. Uh, generates a semi group. Okay. So, this gives an idea how this lower order terms or lower order perturbations uh, should be with the, the main one. Uh, this is the our main operator. Okay, and we are perturbing by lower order terms. So, how how can we expect again that to generate uh, a semi group? Okay, so this is the idea behind uh, the discussion of this perturbation results. Okay. Okay. <coughs> uh, suppose.
uh, A and B are linear operators. in H. Okay. So, let us continue the discussion in Hilbert space okay. and assume d a a subspace of d b. Okay. So, this assumption makes so that so that a plus b is defined at least on d a this is defined on d a intersection d b, but d a is a subspace of d b. So, it is domain of definition is also d a. Okay. If a is closed this A plus B need not be closed in general. A plus B need not be closed. Close in general ok. And same thing we also expect. So, even if A is self adjoint and B is symmetric this A plus B need not be self adjoint in general. Okay. So, here is one sufficient condition. So, again this derived by Cato uh, when that becomes true. Okay. So, this is the definition we say B is A bounded, okay, A and B as above. So, A and B are linear operators with d A a subspace of d A. If B x norm is less than or equal to A norm x plus B norm A x for all x in D A. Okay. So, this is for some A B positive. Okay. So, note that this right hand side Okay. So, if you recall the definition of the graph norm, so this is uh, equivalent to the graph norm, graph norm of A. So, when A is a closed operator, we know that the space d a with graph norm becomes a Banach space. So, essentially we are asking for b to be a continuous mapping from uh, d a to h which is continuous okay, that is what we are expecting here. So, essentially this means Uh, at least when A is closed, when A is closed, B is a continuous operator, bounded operator from D A. So, we noted this with graph norm into H.
So, that b is going to be our perturbation. So, this a is the our main operator. So, if b is a bounded then there is a possibility that uh, a plus b will have the property similar to that of a. If a is closed then a plus b is closed. If a is self adjoint with some additional condition we expect uh, a to be a plus b also to be self adjoint. Okay. So, here is one more definition okay. the uh, let me call it star the infimum of all b positive uh, for which uh, star holds for some a positive. So, if you change b then a also may change ok. So, that is is called the a bound and in literature you also find the name Cato bound ok. Cato bound of b. Okay, so, this definition there. Okay. So, the restriction is on this Cato bound or A bound. Okay. So, when that A bound of B is under control, so nice things happen. Okay. So, let me just state this as a theorem and then <coughs> So, suppose A, B are linear operators uh, with D A subspace of D B, B A bounded with uh, a bound less than 1 less than 1. So, these are the assumptions on the operator a and b ok. Then the following hold the first one if a is closed then a plus b is also closed. So, just see here we are not putting any conditions or assumption on b. We are not assuming that b is closed. Okay. So, that is so that is the uh, first one and uh, the next one this. <coughs> assume A is self adjoint and B symmetric. Okay. So, with these two a, 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 uh, additional assumptions then A plus B is also self adjoint. Okay. So, especially the second one, the second part, this is used, used in the study of Schrodinger operator. 
this is the main ingredient there Schrodinger equation with a potential. Okay, let me just simply say that. So, the Schrodinger equation this d u by 1 by i d u by d t this Laplace in u plus v u. Okay, so, this is the potential. So, this is a function given function real valued function. Okay, so, this Laplace n is uh, we are going to with appropriate domain. So, this del is a self adjoint operator. So, I am not telling you what is the space and what is the domain. So, we will come to that thing. And since V is real valued, so that certainly is this multiplier operator is symmetric. Okay. So, then under some certain conditions on the potential V, this is also going to be self adjoint and that is what we want okay. under some assumptions on V. And that is where you uh, <coughs> require uh, your knowledge in Sobolev spaces and various inequalities. See, essentially, we have to obtain such estimates, right? So, here is the definition. So, this star, okay, so these are going to be some norms in some function spaces, and so the inequalities you would have studied are helpful in deriving such estimates and then finally, we have to show that the Cartow bound uh, is controlled and less than 1. Okay. So, let me just make one remark. So, closing remark. So, here we have assumed this uh, Cartow bound is less than 1. Okay. So, there are results uh, which will go up to 1 a bound equal to 1. So, for those results, so you can look into this Cartos bound. So, you can one can go up to uh, 1. Okay. So, Cartos book. So, this is quite old book. So, perturbation of uh, linear operators title itself okay. So, with this essentially recalled whatever uh, we need from this theory of unbounded operators. Of course, in case we need little more then we can always uh, do at that time. And uh, from uh, next time onwards, we uh, are going to study semi groups little bit. Of course, that is also not in full detail. Uh, some will uh, describe various notions and come up to Hilayushida theorem. And after that, will take up the study of PDs. Thank you.